Welcome to Oma's True Stories. This is the story of Mama Lele. In 2001, in a small village in southeast Nigeria, a woman named Mama Lele was known for running a local food business in a dirty bacha located in a mechanic workshop. She was famous for her local food spot, where luxury cars would line up outside her bacha, despite the unclean surroundings. Even though her food was served in such a humble, dirty setting, people from all over, especially men, flocked to her place as if her meals were irresistible. It was not uncommon to see men who had returned from the city making Mama Lele's bacha their first stop before even going home. At Mama Lele's bacha, it was clear that men would rather eat her food than the meals prepared by their wives, no matter how simple or dirty her spot looked. The local men were enchanted by her cooking, but no one could explain why her food had such a magnetic pull on them. At her food court, customers were divided into distinct lines, one for those arriving in luxury cars, another for bikers, and a third line for those who came on foot, each group knowing their place. Many men who returned from the city would drive straight to Mama Lele's bacha instead of going home to eat the food their wives had prepared. In many instances, wives would prepare meals for their husbands, only to be left waiting as the men drove straight to Mama Lele's bacha instead of coming home to eat. On one occasion, a man who came on a motorbike mistakenly joined the line for those with flashy cars, and Mama Lele stormed over, dragged him out, and knocked him to his knees in front of everyone. Despite the humiliation, the man remained on his knees, begging Mama Lele to serve him food, as if he couldn't bear to live without tasting it. It wasn't just him, many men were willing to endure her harsh treatment just to get a plate of her food, no matter how insulting she was. One of the strange things about Mama Lele's bacha was that every man who came had to wash his own plate before being served, regardless of his status or wealth. No matter how wealthy or powerful a man was, Mama Lele insisted that everyone follow the same rule, wash your plate, stand in line, and wait your turn. One day, a wealthy man from the city, dressed in fine clothes, arrived in his flashy car and stood confused at the idea of washing as the man hesitated, Mama Lele marched over, snatched the plate from his hands, and threw it into the washing basin, demanding he follow the rules or leave own plate. The wealthy man, embarrassed by Mama Lele's boldness, reluctantly bent over to wash his plate while others in line watched with amusement. Even after the men had finished eating, they still formed a line to wash their plates before leaving. Others could be seen wiping down the tables where they had eaten, making sure everything was clean before returning to their luxury cars and driving off. Despite the strange rules and her harsh behavior, men kept returning to Mama Lele's bacha as if her food had some sort of magical hold over them. Around Mama Lele's bacha, there were other restaurants, clean, well-kept places with modern decor, but these spots barely had one or two customers sitting inside, despite their tidy appearance. Meanwhile, Mama Lele had built a beautiful, large house that stood out in the village, a symbol of her success, even though her bacha remained in a dirty mechanic workshop. One day, a group of angry women gathered and marched to Mama Lele's bacha, determined to confront her for luring their husbands away from home-cooked meals. As they got closer to the bacha, they were suddenly hit by a strong, unpleasant odor oozing from the place, stopping them in their tracks. Despite their determination, the women found themselves unable to step inside, puzzled by how their husbands could prefer to eat in such a dirty, foul-smelling environment. The woman left, confused and unsettled, wondering what kind of spell Mama Lele had cast that made their husbands ignore the filthy conditions just to eat her food. As rumors spread about the encounter, more people in the village began to talk, but no one could figure out the true secret behind Mama Lele's strange success. One day, a woman who could no longer tolerate her husband's obsession with Mama Lele's food stormed the bacha in a rage, determined to confront her. As the woman started shouting at Mama Lele, accusing her of bewitching their men, her husband, a wealthy man, appeared, furious at the scene his wife was causing. In front of everyone, the man slapped his wife hard, sending her to the ground, as the crowd watched in shock. The woman cried out in pain, 
but before she could escape, Mama Lele ordered the man to kneel, as punishment for his actions. The wealthy man, who was used to commanding respect, obediently knelt down before Mama Lele, humiliated in front of everyone. Later that night, the man returned home, his anger still boiling. He violently beat his wife, unleashing his fury on her for the sin she had caused at Mama Lele's bacha. As he struck her, he warned her never to go back to Mama Lele's place, insisting that she should stay away from the bacha and its foul-smelling environment. The wife, battered and bruised, cried uncontrollably, her sobs echoing through their luxurious home as she struggled to understand the violence she endured. The next day, the woman, her face swollen and bruised from the beating, visited a friend. She recounted the harsh treatment she had received and the violence she endured. Her friend, moved by her plight, advised her to visit a wise elder in the village who might shed light on the mysterious allure of Mama Lele's food and the strange hold it had on their men. The woman, desperate for answers and seeking solace, agreed to follow her friend's suggestion, hoping to uncover the truth behind Mama Lele's inexplicable success. The next morning, the two women set out to visit the powerful seer, hoping to uncover the secret behind Mama Lele's mysterious hold on the men in the village. The seer, with an aura of deep wisdom, revealed the shocking truth, Mama Lele engaged in dark and forbidden practices to attract customers to her bacha. She explained that every morning, before dawn, Mama Lele visited a local mortuary. There, she paid the attendants to release a dead body to her. Mama Lele would then bathe the corpse, using the water from this ritual to cook her food, which she served at her bacha. This grisly practice was the source of the irresistible allure of her food. The native doctor who performed the dark rituals for Mama Lele had warned her that if anyone discovered her secret, it would lead to severe consequences, including the potential collapse of the powerful enchantment sustaining her success. Upon hearing the seer's revelation, the two women were stunned into silence, their eyes wide with disbelief and horror. The gravity of Mama Lele's dark practices left them reeling, struggling to process the chilling reality behind her seemingly magical success. The woman with the swollen face clutched her friend's arm, her shock evident as she stared blankly, unable to reconcile the gruesome truth with the thriving business she had admired from afar. Her friend, equally horrified, tried to digest the revelation, her face paling as the implications of the native doctor's warning sank in. They both understood the gravity of the situation, realizing that exposing Mama Lele's secret could have far-reaching and terrifying consequences. When the women returned home, they immediately shared the shocking revelation with their husbands, but their disbelief only deepened the tension in their relationships. The men, initially skeptical, were taken aback by the story of Mama Lele's dark practices, and their reactions ranged from disbelief to anger. As word spread throughout the village, rumors began to circulate about Mama Lele's methods, causing a noticeable shift in the once bustling atmosphere around her bacha. Gradually, the number of customers dwindled, and the once crowded bacha started to see fewer and fewer men willing to brave the foul smelling environment, as the truth began to unravel. As Mama Lele's bacha dwindled with fewer customers, the Nita restaurants nearby began to thrive, attracting the very men who once flocked to her food store. From a distance, Mama Lele watched in frustration as her competitors flourished, their tables filled with happy diners enjoying clean, well-prepared meals. Determined to maintain her reputation, Mama Lele began cooking more food than ever, filling large pots with a variety of dishes in an attempt to draw back customers. However, as the days passed and no one came to eat, she found herself pouring the excess food into a gutter, her heart heavy with the waste of all her efforts. In the quiet of her lavish mansion, Mama Lele sat alone, tears streaming down her face as she reflected on the twist of fate that had led her to this dark path. Memories of her youth flooded back, she had been a stunning young woman in her twenties, turning down advances from men, determined to dedicate her life to the church as a nun. However, everything changed when a charming man entered her life, sweeping her off her feet and igniting feelings she thought she could resist. As their relationship blossomed, 
Mama Lele felt genuine happiness for the first time and began preparing for marriage, dreaming of a future filled with love. When she discovered she was pregnant, joy enveloped her, she believed she was about to marry the man of her dreams, the one who had taken her innocence. But her happiness shattered when he asked her to terminate the pregnancy, coldly dismissing her feelings and leaving her heart broken. I thought you loved me, she had cried, but his response was a ruthless rejection, sending her spiraling into despair. In her anguish, she left his house, but as she crossed the street, she was struck by a car, narrowly escaping with her life while losing the pregnancy. She ended up spending weeks in the hospital, alone and forgotten. When she finally recovered and sought him out, she learned he had fled to Europe, leaving no trace, not even a goodbye. Heartbroken and devastated, Mama Lele swore to deal with men, vowing never to allow herself to be vulnerable again. It was then that she began to seek out dark powers to exact her revenge, developing a deep-seated hatred for men, channeling her pain into a determination to make them pay for the betrayal she had suffered. After her decision to seek revenge, Mama Lele returned to consult the herbalist who had given her the dark powers, only to find out he had died. Heartbroken and alone, she returned to her once lavish mansion, but the joy of her past had faded, leaving her in despair. As days turned into weeks, Mama Lele fell ill, growing increasingly slim and frail, her skin developing painful irritations that mirrored her inner turmoil. One fateful night, she succumbed to her illness in her sleep, her life slipping away unnoticed, leaving her lifeless body in the cold embrace of her empty mansion. It wasn't until three months later that neighbors noticed a foul smell emanating from her home, prompting them to break in and discover her decomposing body lying on her bed. After her body was removed, her once grand mansion fell into disrepair, overtaken by grass and weeds, becoming a shadow of its former self. To this day, the mansion is said to be haunted, and no one dares to approach it, leaving it sealed and forgotten in the annals of the village's dark history. The story of Mama Lele serves as a powerful reminder of the destructive power of vengeance and hatred. Her journey from a young, hopeful woman to someone consumed by bitterness illustrates how harboring resentment can lead to one's downfall. Instead of healing from her betrayal, she allowed her pain to transform her into something monstrous, using dark forces to manipulate others and seek revenge. Ultimately, this path led to her tragic demise, leaving her alone and forgotten in the very mansion she once built as a symbol of her success. The moral is clear, holding on to bitterness and choosing revenge over forgiveness can have dire consequences, not only for those we seek to hurt but for ourselves. It is essential to find peace within, even in the face of betrayal, and to remember that love and healing are the true antidotes to pain.